And just like that, the Christmas season is upon us again. But I have never been more grateful for a season of joy and a season of hope to wrap up a very different kind of year. What's up, y'all? It's Rachel Elizabeth, and you're watching Real Talk with Rach, where we talk about real things because it's the real, honest, hard, vulnerable things that get us deeper in relationship with others and deeper in intimacy with God. Before I say anything else, I just want to say thank you to all of you who were on the live stream with me this last Wednesday. It was such a treat. The Lord had a lot more to say than I had anticipated but it was so good. So if you didn't see it and you have an extra 40 minutes, you should check it out. It was amazing. That said, it was either in last week's live stream or a very recent vlog where I encouraged you to read Job or Psalm 18, just as two places of many in scripture that describe the wonder and the majesty and the otherliness of God. His magnificence is seen throughout the Bible, but those are two that highlight the strength and majesty and wonder of God. And this week, I got to dive into Psalm 18 a little deeper, and what I found was so beautifully convicting, meaning I'm really, really excited that he showed me this, but it required a little bit of humbling because what he showed me was this. I'm sure I'm not alone when I say that so many times that I've read the Psalms or even other portions of scripture, I am looking for him, but I'm also reading it with myself in mind. Let me give you an example. About midway through Psalm 18, the psalmist writes this. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? Beautiful, right? Listen to this. It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You give me your shield of victory and your right hand sustains me. You stoop down to make me great. You broaden the path beneath me so that my ankles do not turn. I pursued my enemies and overtook them. I did not turn back until they were destroyed. And it goes on. Be honest, when I read that, how many of you were stoked that God was going to stoop down and make you great? That's what the Bible says. It's in here. I'm not going to lie. I really enjoy that passage. Just the idea that God is going to make me great makes my ego feel wonderful. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm not alone because that is human nature. And for those of us who need, desperately need to be lifted up, that's a healing verse. It reminds us that no matter where we are in our circumstances, our God is for us, not against us. He lifts us up. He puts our feet on a rock. But he showed me this today, and this is one of the things I love about spending precious quality time slowly reading the word because he gives you new perspectives. I'm going to read the verses I just read one more time, but this time, instead of hearing it about what God is doing for you, think about it from this perspective. Think about what kind of God we serve. Think about what this says about him. Okay, you ready? As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord and who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You give me your shield of victory and your right hand sustains me. You stoop down to make me great. You broaden the path beneath me so that my ankles do not turn. I pursued my enemies and overtook them. I did not turn back until they were destroyed. Now my heart's involved because I'm looking at him. Yes, the psalmist is writing about himself, but truly he's writing about himself because of how he can glorify the Lord through it. From this perspective, we can actually find more treasure when we submit to humility and make it about him and not about us. Even though it's obviously written for us to take something out of it for ourselves, what if we turn it around and start reading it from the perspective of who is God that he would stoop down to make me great? Who is God that he would take the time and the attention to train my arms and my hands for battle? Who is God that he would enable me to stand on heights? 
Who is this God who would broaden the path beneath my feet so my ankles don't turn? How considerate, how kind, how attentive. And again, herein lies the temptation to say, well, God is for me, so it must all be about me. But let that just be a temptation and not one you fall into. Jesus, the one who this season of hope and joy is about, is the incarnation of this God we read about. And Jesus is our living hope, but he's also our example. If this is our example, and this is really about God and not us, then once he's done this for us, we should then turn and do this for others. If God arms me with strength and makes my way perfect, then we should help arm others with strength and point them to Jesus who makes their way perfect. If he enables me to stand on the heights, that means that we should lift others up to stand on the heights with us. If he trains my hands for battle, then we should be discipling others, training them for battle too, knowing that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers and authorities of darkness. If he gives us his shield of victory and his right hand sustains us and he stoops down to make us great, shouldn't we celebrate others over ourselves? Shouldn't we help those who are in need and think of them and their needs before we think of ours? Shouldn't we stoop down to make others great? Shouldn't our lives be spent to broaden the path for those coming up behind us so that their ankles don't turn? Shouldn't the choices that we make with our lives be the example that others are safe to follow? And if you haven't caught on yet, this is a maturity process, but it's also one that we've been called to because this is about Jesus. The God of the universe stooped down to make us great, meaning he humbled himself. He became a servant to us. He humbled himself unto death the same way that we overcome by the blood of the lamb, the power of our testimony, and not loving our own lives unto death. He is our blueprint. He is the model. He is our very life. He is our reason for living. He is our purpose. He is our why. He is our strength and he is our victory because that victory has already been won. Christ in us and us in Christ. He lives outside of time and so do we in him. When he died on the cross, he defeated sin and death forever, meaning anything you struggle with is already finished, overcome. It's already done. Ask him for revelation of that. Ask him for revelation of the power of his blood. If you're still struggling, then you just simply need a revelation of the power of the gospel, the power of the blood of Jesus, and the finished work that he did on the cross. That is why this Christmas season is so unbelievably beautiful. It reminds us of when our eternal hope came into the world as a baby, the most vulnerable, the most humble, in order to live a human life so that we could relate to him and he could relate to us, so that he could live a perfect life and die in our place, the death we couldn't die because we aren't perfect. And by that death on the cross, he made it possible that we could be made perfect by his blood, that all who believe that he is the son of God, that he did what he said he did, would be sons and daughters of God. All we have to do is believe. (laughs) Y'all, this is one subject I will always be redundant about. The gospel needs repeating over and over and over again, not just to others, but to ourselves. Our own hearts need reminding. And we need to understand that even though Holy Spirit uses the word of God to speak to us in our need, in our frailty, to encourage us, to uplift us. Yes, he does that. But truly, it's not about us, it's about him. Truly, when we can see the third perspective, after we know that it's about him and that he's our example, we can transition from sons and daughters to sons and daughters who are mothers and fathers. And that has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with whether you're a natural mother or father or not. Spiritual mothers and fathers are simply those who have understood this, that everything points back to Jesus, that he is our example, and that he led by example so that we would turn and live by example for the benefit of others. So let me encourage you to read Psalm 18 again with this perspective. Let me encourage you to read all scripture with these perspectives. And let me encourage you to continue to seek him because he has even more perspectives to reveal to you as you grow up into him. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and share it with a friend who needs it. If you wanna support this ministry in any way, There are links in the description box below and a link in my Instagram bio. I love you. I'm praying for you. Have a great week.